Okay, it is time for an unboxing. And we have a bag in a box. But what's inside the box that was inside the bag? Okay, so first off, there is not any proper box to it whatsoever. It is just a plain cardboard box. And inside of that plain cardboard box, we have this. This is a WL Toys Desert Buggy. up this box here So here we have the 112th electric four-wheel drive climbing car is what they call it. It is WL Toys model 12428. Technically what this is, is it's kind of a um, Vatera Twin Hammers or, or Axial uh, Rock Racer ripoff. A um, little smaller, those are 1 10th scale, this is 1 12th. To me, the difference is negligible, but some people, they might be a little nitpickety or uh, persnickety about it. Then inside this other plain white box we have here, a hex nut tool. Get that in the shot. A balance charger. And just a regular old AC plug. And last but not least, a little Phillips head screwdriver. So let's take a look at the remote that came with this. We'll put it in the shot here in front of the buggy. It's just a standard wheel remote. It looks like it has a, a steering trim and a uh, dual rate trim on it. Let's see here, we've got uh, mode one, two, three, and four, whatever those are. Maybe the instruction book will explain it. And kind of get a feel of it here. Yeah, it doesn't feel too bad. It's really lightweight, but it doesn't feel like it's too cheap like I thought it would. Take a look at the instruction manual here. And you've got your basic little warning sheet that you get with everything that looks very much like a Tamiya warning sheet with a little anime character drawn there. Then again, here's the book. You can see the little characters drawn, very Tamiya-like. Very nice. We have a parts explosion list here, a list of available spare parts, so you can see this is very much a hobby grade vehicle, even though the name WL Toys is kind of misleading. Now, what you have here is you have the independent front suspension, and then you have a solid axle rear suspension. That's uh, very much the desert buggy, uh, now trophy truck kind of uh, popular thing that's going on right now, is the, uh, instead of the independent front and rear suspension, you've got a solid, Rear suspension looks like there's some independent coils here, and uh, you got your drive line here. So let's take off the uh, the body if we can here, and see what we've got underneath. Now 
Oh, let's see here. It looks like the body did not come off here, but here is the battery. And the battery it looks like here that we have got a one, two, three, four cell with Dean's connector and a, uh, a balance charger. So this may be a lithium battery. Let's have a look at it. Indeed it is. 7.4 volt, 1500 milliamp. I did not expect to get a lithium battery on it. I expected it to be a NICAD. Okay, so it looks like all the body panels on here are screwed on with these little screws. That's the Phillips head screwdriver. So we are not going to remove the body right now. We'll come back in a few minutes with the body removed so we can see the electronics underneath. Which, speaking of electronics, I should mention, the uh, four rack lights here and the, uh, the two push bar lights here, they work. So that's a, a pretty cool thing in my opinion, is you can drive it outside at night with the LEDs on. And we're definitely going to get some footage of that. Uh, so we'll come back here in a little bit with the body removed and uh, see what it looks like underneath all the electronics. Okay, so the good news is we were able to get the body off of it with only eight screws instead of all the hundreds of little ones that are there. Now that we see underneath here, we can look. And here you have the ESC. And you have a little controller board here of some kind with um, two inputs for the lights. I uh, imagine if you decided to go with a different ESC, it looks like this isn't wired into a third channel or anything. So you could just wire those up directly to the battery and, and have those run off of there or off of a uh, BEC to, to limit your voltage. You have a quite beefy heat sink right here that runs clear the length under here to the motor mount. 540 brushed motor. Inboard shocks, rear shocks. Now off camera, I did take these apart and uh, they are bone dry. There is no oil in there. We're gonna try running them without the oil in them. And then we're gonna put in some maybe a uh, 50 weight oil and see how it does after uh, that's put in. Now, one other thing is the battery here. We insert it into the rear where it goes. You can see there's not much space there, but there's a little left over. You've got maybe an inch there for a bigger battery to fit. That's kind of discouraging because 1500 milliamps is a very short runtime for um, a 540 brush motor, especially if you decide to put a brushless motor in here, which we'll probably do later on. The other good thing is the, uh, the wheels here, the bead lock. The bead locks are real. You have your screws that go in there to mount the tire on there. I didn't take them apart yet to see if there's foams under there, but I can kind of tell just by pressing on them here, there is. So we'll take the foam off eventually and uh, reconfirm that there is foams in there, but it does look like there is. If you look here, you got a metal drive shaft coupling here and here, metal drive shaft with plastic sleeve. So this thing should be pretty durable. Your transmission here is sealed to keep the rocks and dust and stuff out of there. So I don't foresee, unless the gears are soft, there really being a problem with it. We're going to take the gear cover off here in just a moment and see if we've got a brass pinion on there or if it's steel. Okay, so now that we got it apart, and, and believe me, this thing is not the easiest to wrench on. The screws are, are really long and... Not easy to get to everything. There's always something on top of something else. So looking in here, we can see that we got the big plastic spur gear. And uh, on this, the pinion gear is brass, so it's soft. So that means if you decide to upgrade to brushless, you're gonna need to go to a steel gear because the brass is just too soft. Probably even could use to go with a, a steel spur gear too, but I imagine uh, it'd be difficult finding one in the uh, the right size made in steel now the drive shaft here if we pull this up <clears throat> you see underneath here the drive shaft is indeed metal i don't know if you can see that or not but with that plate in the way but yeah it is completely metal drive shaft on there 
So we're going to go ahead and button it back up and the next video we see is going to be running. Okay, so we decided to go ahead and just take a wheel off of it because I wanted to see if it had bearings in the wheel and as you can see it does. And without taking the bead locks off of there, because like I said, all these screws are really long and uh, kind of a pain to get out. So we're going to scroll over here to the manual. And as you can see, it does indeed have foams in the wheels. So that, that's pretty good for, for a couple of the chintzy parts on there for the, you know, like the, um, the brass uh, pinion gear. Everything else looks to be pretty top notch. Uh, of course, and again, the, the shocks were bone dry, but you know, they could have did that intentionally so they wouldn't leak all over in shipping, who knows. But um, we're gonna try it without oil, we're gonna try it with oil, and we don't have to do bearings because it's already got them. No foams either, because it's already got it. And just so we're sure that we leave no stone unturned, it does look like these are standard either 10 or 12 millimeter hexes here for the whole big wheel on. So either way, whether it's a 10 or 12 millimeter, you're going to have a pretty good choice of uh, aftermarket wheels and tires that you can use on here.